Hey, what's up, y'all? What's up? What's up? This is Koski of Funny back at it once again. And we're back in the series of Black Pacific, you know. And um, and this one, we're going to tie the Black Pacific movement of our Aboriginal brothers and sisters over in the Pacific to the ADOS movement, you know. Um, as you know, the United States got a big ADOS movement for uh, compensation or reparations for what for slavery and stuff like that. So I'm going to show you a replica movement that's really that been in, in, in the mix for a long time. But they're getting their reparations now from the, the fight and the stuff like that they've been going through. This one is Stolen Generations. Victim to get $73 million in compensation. The NSW government says. This is um, December 2016. North South Wales has led to of Tasmania and South Australian government in paying reparations to the Aboriginal people who was part of the Stolen Generations. This compensation is part of a $73 million package to be tabled in the new South Wales Parliament on Friday, aimed at addressing the trauma and the harmful cause by forced removal of original Aboriginal children from their families. It follows a 12-month inquiry carried out by the state government into response to the 1997 Bring Them Home report, which is the first comprehensive investigation into the practice of forced removal and the ongoing effects of the Aboriginal people. Money will never fully repair the damages, survivors say. But many of those who were taken from their families say no amount of money will be able to compensate the victims for the trauma they were put through. Richard Campbell and his four siblings were taken when he was only eight years old, and he suffered abuse while being had a notorious Cagatina boy's home. It was awful. When we first went in there, they just went at us and started belting us around in the head and things like that. They stripped up off of us, burned our clothes, shaved our heads, and put white powder all over us, Campbell said. Now, this is the compensation package they got. The stolen generation organizations to get direct funding over the next 10 years. $5 million to the Stolen Generations Healing Fund for healing activities, healing centers, and keeping places and memorials. 7000 to the Stolen Generations Funeral Fund. Better administrative process for our survivors needing access to identity records to help prove their aboriginality. And establish of a Stolen Generations Advisory Committee. So that's a compensation package. The boys were told to forget their names and call by numbers. Richard Campbell said he was getting a, given a number 28. He said reparations from the state government would not give him back his youth. James Michael Welsh was also sent to the Conchella boys' home, and he said, while that was not the ultimate solution, the compensation would help. I'm involved in healing foundations, so all of us, that is a great help for me, he said. It is something that this government has come to the table now and offered these things as a monetary thing. It is good. Anything is good, as long as it make us keep going forward on our journey, with our journey. Compensation goes beyond mere symbolism. The Minister of Aboriginal Affairs, Leslie Williams, delivered an apology to survivors of the stolen generations earlier this year, but said this ensured the government move beyond the symbolism of words to deliver a comprehensive package of support. The package would include one-off payments to survivors, a healing fund to address some of the intergenerational trauma experienced in the Aboriginal communities, and four groups that were established to help survivors will receive funding for 10 years. Victim lives were severely impacted, the report found. Evidence collected from the Bringing Them Home report, compiled from the Australian Bureau of Statistics data, and a study of stolen generation survivors, shows the children were forcibly removed from their family experience worse outcomes than the children who were not. The report found that members of the stolen generation were Less likely to undertake a post-secondary education and, most, and much less likely to have stable living conditions. Three times more than likely to say they have been no one to call in a time of crisis and less likely to be stable confined in a relationship with a partner. Twice as likely that a reporter had been arrested by the police and had been convicted of a defense. Three times as likely to have been in jail and less likely to have a strong sense of their aboriginal cultural identity. Twice as likely to report current use of illicit substance. 
The NSW government said it acknowledged the intergenerational trauma suffered by the Aboriginal community because of the forced removal and the funding plan table today went towards addressing those issues. So they got things set up. As I said, they got a, um, a healing booth, which is very important because, you know, that deals with the mental health of what's going on, you know. And they just, the money is not really about the money. It go beyond male stimulus, but it's really beyond, beyond the money and stuff like that, you know. They got a stolen generation advisory committee. Um, and they got a, a, a burial fund for the, you know, for the stolen generation. Now this right here is a continuance of it, and this come from um, this came out this month, May um, March fifteenth, two thousand nineteen. Australian Aborigines win the right to sue. Remember, they win the right to sue for their colonial losses. The ruling in favor of the Nullarwa and the Nunja groups paid away for billions of dollars in compensation. Sydney, Australia, the High Court of Australia has handed down the biggest native title ruling affecting. Aboriginal ownership of land in decades amidst the claims of billions of dollars of compensation will be needed to pay by the government to the indigenous groups. Native title referred to the rights of Australian indigenous people to their traditional land and water recognized by Australian common law. Lawyers, including those representing mining companies, <clears throat> said the ruling in favor of the Najawa and the Narali Aboriginal groups from a remote part of the Northwest Territory, paid way for billions of dollars in compensation nationally. The High Court decision will likely be triggered by compensation of applications from many of hundreds of NATO title holders, groups around Australia, said Tony Denholder, in a wake of a case that a federal High Court ruled in 2016 before the High Court got involved, became involved. The Native Title Act came after the Mambo decision of 19 of 19, 1993 overturned the British claim that Australia was terrorless norless, nobody land. It founded the Aboriginal rights to some, but by no means all the land survived colonization and were not extinguished. Since then, Aboriginal groups have been able to file a native title claim over large parts of the country. Now the High Court has handed down another landmark ruling in the matter of paying compensation for the loss of those rights and the loss of economic income related to the land and a loss of spiritual connection to the land. Or, in other words, putting a financial price of severing of cultural ties. In 2016, the Nullarai and the Nairaji Aboriginal groups was awarded $2.3 million in damages because the federal court had found a, that their native title rights were extinguished by the Northern Territory government when it built roads and infrastructure near their country, through their country, near Timber Creeks, in the 1980s and 1990s. About one million of it was for spiritual harm, which the Northern Territories and the federal government argued was excessive. But the High Court this week agreed, disagreed. Megan Bryan, a native title, a native title lawyer and a director of Kama Group, told Al Jazeera it's the most important native title ruling in more than 20 years. This is a very important case because it's the first time the High Court has set up principles for compensation. State law practically interested in analyzing their compensation liability, she said. Where companies are operating on land posted in 1995, their lawyers will be looking into this. In 1975 date, it's key because the year Australia brought the Racial Discrimination Act 18 years before the Native Title Act, but just as important. Only did the government have a, a treat the native, the property of rights of Aboriginal Australians, the same as other Australians, explained James Wallachy, a native title lawyer with Chalk and Bernhardt. Since the last, the first colonization of Australia, Aboriginal people have been dispossessed of property and culture, but only since 1975 has the loss of native title become compensationable. Unwittingly, state and territorial governments, or mining or pastoral company and pastoral companies, working with the blessings of the government continue to extinguish native title by their activities right up to the landmark Marlboro ruling in the Native Title Act of 1993. The Narayal and Narayal groups were assisted in their fight for compensation by the Northern Land Council, a major Aboriginal representative group on the land matters in Northern Territory, which took the case to court. Interim CEO Jack Hot Tit 
confirm other groups were in the works of making taking advantage of the ruling. I have already been notified of other groups, he told Al Jazeera. This is the ruling that begins a different light on native land and the cultural and spiritual loss, let alone the inhabitants to make any economic opportunities, the inability to make any economic opportunities from those lands. We need to revisit those castes where they have been unjustly and personally acquired by the governments. And we need them to take instructions from them, he said. We need to take, we need to, we then need to take instructions from them. The whole board game changes. Brian said, while the ruling provides a significant guidance in illumined court cases, there were still many matters left in the open by the case, not at least how to determine the appropriate amounts of compensation. She remained hopeful argument agreements could be found before a more costly path for litigation. If not, we can expect there will be more matters before the court, said Brian. So here go right here. They got their land and they got their title, their land, and um their reparations. So this movement in Australia, as you see, started back in nineteen seventy five. And it just kept on chipping away. Then it got a big deal. We talked about the Native Title Act in nineteen ninety three. I got a um a video on Mabo uh, in this 1993 ruling in Black Pacific on this stuff we're talking about right now. Please check that out. It, it gives you more insight of what's going on. But to the ADOS movement in the United States, this is the kind of movement you have to replicate to get what you need. You feel me? This is where the kind of bonding is, and this is a, a, a blueprint, the forerunner, if you want to go that route with the ADOS political stuff. You're going to have to have court battles eventually and political things that you're doing right now. You know, so, yeah, 1975, Racial Discrimination Act, 18, you know what I'm saying? So, that's what opened the door. Then, 1993, blew the door off the hinges. And now, about 20 years later, 25 years later from that, they're getting their reparations. Um, they're getting their damages. They're getting their, and they're getting their land back. So, just think about that, you know what I'm saying, about movements to follow and, and locate on it, and, you know, for the ADOS movie here in the United States. Anyway, it's a Coast Gift Fun Day. I'm saying one love. Hit the like button. You know, bring a comment or something. You know what I'm saying? You got to share something on, on this subject. You got something to share about it. And um, hey, much love. Thank you for letting me bring this knowledge here to you and yours. Peace.